On this episode of The Infinite Loop Show, our heroes go over the latest developments in gaming and consoles. Casey, that's E3. We're going to talk about WWDC. Oh. Well, then Khaleesi and her dragons, they were all Casey, like... Casey, this is the Mac show, not the next... Oh! On The Infinite Loop Show! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 20. I can't get this thing working right. I'm Michael Gaines. I'm Casey Coughlin. Hello, Khaleesi Coughlin. How are you? <laughs> I got dragons, and they were free, and we were going to roam and take back the throne. No spoilers. Oh, I'm catching up. Spoiler alert. No, here's the thing is that somebody posted pictures of the finale like right after it happened on the East Coast, which pissed off a bunch of West Coast people. It's the internet. I know. It's it's almost... See, the one thing about living on the East Coast is that we never had that problem. Like when, <laughs> when The Sopranos was on, because here in Jersey, The Sopranos are like, like if you don't watch it, then there's something wrong with you. Uh, um, yeah, seriously. <laughs> but they're like, on the, the they're West... in your neighborhood, right? They're like right around the corner. Literally, the next cold to sack over. So, like, you're not <laughs> it's funny because off of Route One, there's Freeling Housing Avenue, which is what they talked about in the Sopranos all the time. It happened like in my area. It's it's really funny. To, um, they they filmed it around here. So Dude, actually, so when so when he was running away in the last episode, he's like running through your backyard. I I saw they were filming the finale across the street from where I work. Um. I don't want to spoil it for those people that may or may not have seen the ending, but there's there's a scene oh, at a gas station. I, I know after all little... these years, <laughs> there's a there's a scene at a gas station in the finale where something happened, and I was actually I have pictures on my Flickr page. Of, um, stuff happens. Stuff happens. Oh my god! But you know what stuff is gonna happen? <laughs> You're, what is this? WWDC is on Monday. Yay! <laughs> this is like our Christmas, isn't it? It is. Oh my God! It's so like this one especially. If all these rumors come true and they actually launch or at least announce all the stuff they're supposed to, this mm -hmm. is literally going to be our Christmas. This is going to be, in my opinion, um, the biggest product, the biggest number of product announcements that we've seen in a long time. Not just like a big thing like the iPhone or something like that. The entire line is supposed to get re revamped. This is going to, if that happens, this will be the largest simultaneous launch in Apple history. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're hoping because uh, anybody who's been listening to this show knows I need a new Mac Pro badly because this thing oh, is six man. years old <laughs> and it's showing its age. It's going through puberty, you know, it's, it's going through <laughs> changes. It, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely giving, I, I said to Casey before we started recording that, uh, during WWDC, if they announce a new Mac Pro, my finger is going to be on the trigger. So I'm going to... To shoot the current Mac Pro he has. <laughs> no, I'm not going to shoot it. I'm, I, might, oh. I might keep it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or sell. There's nothing like there's nothing wrong with it as far as like it doesn't work. It's just that for the multi... <laughs> no, for the multimedia it's stuff... It's fine, I'm, except like, it all doesn't this. work. No, it's the, the multimedia stuff is it's like you can hear it just going, <laughs> but it's still it's oh, just still it a good machine. Noises. No, if you're that's, doing stuff like Final like, Cut Pro, it works. That's a fabulous Craigslist ad right there. <laughs> you know, um, questionable condition. Hey, makes noise. You know, fan goes up. What 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 more do you want? Yeah, it's my air conditioner. <laughs> oh, yeah, makes the room hotter than no. It actually, needs to be. in the winter, this is my heater. Yeah, thing, I, I bet. I'm sure it is. Oh, it is. It is. That and an Xbox, and you're fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's my heating. No, really, the, the the room gets 20 degrees hotter because of the Mac Pro, plus no. probably the lights. I'm not arguing with you. Yeah. I believe you. So yeah, so l let's just get to our first thing. The Mac Pro stock uh, right now uh, is being yanked from stores and. We're supposed to be getting brand new machines on Monday. Well, announced on Monday, according to these yeah, rumors. Yeah, I don't think they'll be hitting stores on Monday. Oh, you never um, know. 
Maybe. If I mean, they they put product out as soon as two weeks, but those have been iPads and easy to ship. Did, as far as the Mac Pros, I'd bet a month after the announcement mm-hmm. that did, you would actually see them in stores. Uh, Digital Kitty in our chat room asks, "Will they be rackable?" I've been reading no, but I have not read they anything about gonna, the new form factor. Yeah, they're saying they'll have server ones, um, which will probably just be a little bit beefed up with the uh, Lion server Mm -hmm. OS instead of regular Lion built in. Right. I don't think they're going to go back to the XServe rack mountable uh, profile anymore. I would personally like one. I would like to just put just just one in the back or something like that because this thing is big. Yeah, that's what she said. And there we go. So I I would like to move this thing to another place that's maybe out of the way more um, because I'm like banging my knee on it all the time. But anyway, the spec the spec sheets <laughs> like it's are ripping over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my heater. <laughs> Sorry. Right, so the, here here's what we have right now: the specs for the new Mac Pro, the the rumored ones, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, are as follows. Um, it's going to be uh, Sandy Bridge, which sure. is interesting. Now, now last week um, we had a uh, we saw an article that said that the new Ivy Bridge chips deal with with um, voltage better, and and yet now we're reading this thing saying that the reason why they're going with Sandy Bridge and not Ivy Bridge is because of voltage. They handle voltage worse. So I. I I, I read this just before we started recording, so I haven't really had a chance to, to go check. But This I'll, could be the difference between the desktop um, Ivy Bridge and the laptop mm-hmm. Ivy Bridge. Possible. I would, I'd have to guess if one was uh, more power intensive than the other one would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if one was significantly more efficient over power, mm-hmm. that would... I'd almost feel like make it a different chip and not just a different profile of sure, that chip. Sure, sure. Um, Max cores eight. Uh, Turbo Boost is going to be two point The L two cache per core is still going to be two hundred fifty six k compared to the last version. Yeah, L three cache is boosted to twenty megabytes, which is very nice. Mm. Um, and uh, what else did we find out? We found out that it's going to have a Thunderbolt USB three. Uh, we don't know how many. Yeah. Um, I would be really surprised if they only put one Thunderbolt on this Mac Pro. Mm-hmm. So they could put two, three, just freaking litter the thing with Thunderbolts all up and down the <laughs> put front. Put them all just over. Ten Every... Thunderbolts. What the hell? Go nuts. <laughs> put people nine of them in the front. Them. They'll use them. And, people, and third-party vendors are coming out with more and more uh, Thunderbolt accessories yes. now. Um what is it, Comdex that's going on this week mm-hmm. in conjunction with, with E3. Tons of third-party manufacturers, PC manufacturers, announcing um, that they're putting Thunderbolt in boards and accessories and utilizing this port that everybody thought was DOA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited for you and other <laughs> macro users. Um, yeah. I might get one later on, but right now, um, I'm super happy with my Mac Pro. So. Yeah, your MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro. Yes, yes that one. <laughs> so as soon as I get one, um, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I can run podcasts on this thing for the drivers. The drivers, because <laughs> because be I don't know if the drivers work with Mountain Lion. That's the only problem. Uh, the drivers for my um, uh, uh, Alesis. That's it. What what else do we have under uh, under the, and I think that's it for new Mac Pros. You've got something uh, for of, the new Mac Pros, right? Um, alongside the spec sheet for the new Mac Pros getting leaked, there was another spec sheet that got leaked mm-hmm. for their new MacBook Pros, but significantly less exciting. Yeah, this, uh, this is disappointing if it's true. Right, a lot of the rumors that we had mentioned um, last week and the week before saying that it was going to be a thinner profile, that there's not going to be uh, FireWire, that they may even do away with uh, Ethernet and the optical drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, this report just really only shows a minor upgrade in the CPU L cache mm-hmm. and the onboard graphics. Right. Everything else is exactly the same, which kind of just makes you feel like, meh. <laughs> well, if this is true, the, uh, the 
somebody posted a, a, a screenshot or, or just a picture of the sticker that's on the box. And so it does have the, um, the super drive in it. Now people were wondering whether or not MacBook, the new MacBook pros are even going to have a, uh, an optical drive in it because they're saying, well, you don't need one anymore. I, I guess you can argue that one way or the other. I personally still like an optical drive, but okay, maybe it's because I still buy optical media because I liked it as a backup. You're so old. I am. God, get with the times. But here's one thing that was curious to me is that it has a FireWire 800 port. Now, I understand that there are a lot of people out there with FireWire devices. I get that. But on a mm. new device from Apple, having a FireWire 800 port is a little strange for me. It seems like something that they might they might want to get rid of well, if they want to make it thinner. As it stands right now, the only port that you can do target disk mode over is FireWire. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that because I haven't used it in about two years. So yeah, you're right. there's that. I have to laugh because, <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> Digital Kitty in the chat room is just like, she's, she's yelling at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you buy optical media on purpose. Uh, yeah. No, by accident. No, <laughs> I do. He's the one who's name- still streaming uh, Netflix uh, via... DVDs in the mail. She says, name four people who use FireWire that don't have podcasts. <laughs> I actually can't. <laughs> so anyway, we'll we'll take a look at this and we'll see what happens on Monday. Um, the the yeah. picture doesn't look fake to you, does it? <sighs> yes and no. I mean, it looks fake in that it's got this kind of milky like 50% opacity sticker over the spec sheet that would be on a box. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, really anything in this day and age can be shopped. So not even shop, but anything in this day and day and age can be put on a sticker and cut out properly. I mean, we don't know if the sticker itself is real. True, maybe they just made a new sticker, put it on a box, took a picture, and now everybody's all hot and bothered. Well, over I it. can do it. I can go down to Staples, get a get a sheet of, of sticker sticker paper, paper and put it in my inkjet. <laughs> right? And sure. the font is available. Um iPhones are going prepaid on Cricket Wireless on June twenty second for What? I- <laughs> I'm canceling my contract. That's it. Do you know anybody who's even cricket? on? I've never even heard of Cricket before. Um, yeah. Have you heard of uh, Metro PCS? Yes. Well, Cricket's like their little brother. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> one of the Metro PCS um, uh, stores in my area just closed. <laughs> so Yay. I don't know what that says, but okay. So they're related. Like, are they owned by the same no, no, parent no, no, company? No, no, no. I don't think they're actually related. I was just like as a size comparison mm-hmm. to the two um, carriers. Okay. Uh, Cricket and I, and really, I mean, Metro PCS, they're really only known for these prepaid phones that you get in like 7-Eleven or Best Buy oh, okay. or Radio Shack, um, where they have like the phone in the hard plastic case. <laughs> I mean, nobody buys yeah. phones like that anymore. They all have these really nice, intricate case you know boxes with the presentation and everything like apple does nobody has like that hard clear plastic case with the phone in the middle and you know it's got maybe a time card in the back of it (laughs) and and you you get it with your freaking slurpee and your 40 ounce of colt 45 or whatever (laughs) and a phone (laughs) and you're good um I should show you the uh, the packaging for my old W800, my Sony Ericsson W800. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> it was like the phone I'm showing on the video. Yeah, the, the phone was like three inches tall, but the packaging was like a foot and a half. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then you have to like kill someone to freaking get into it. Yeah. Um, It's ridiculous. But so, yeah, and soon in those hard, clear plastic packaging will be a iPhone. Okay. Now... Yeah. This is going to be prepaid. How much do you have to pay for the phone itself? You, Since it is prepaid, you're going to have to buy the phone outright. outright. It's so, going to be the full like $500 retail cost. Okay. so th- Oh, I see here. The 8 gigabyte iPhone 4, $400. 16 gig iPhone 4S is $500. No contract. 
Well, that's interesting because I thought these were more at one point, weren't they? Oh, fifty-five dollars per month with unlimited talk, text, data, and no contract. Well, yes, unlimited unless you go over two gigabytes, I believe, and then they begin to throttle you. Well, like that's not really unlimited, now, is it? Person, it's, no, it's not. It's well, unlimited. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you want to move hey, on to you your... Know, they're, they're figuring these people, who are buying these? People with bad credit, people, you know, <laughs> with maybe they can't afford so much. So maybe they're not going to be using so much uh, so much data. Are these like the beepers of the 21st century? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> you know. These are going to be the new burner phones. The burner phones. The iPhone 3GS is the new burner phone. Oh, interesting. For all your drug deals in uh, Baltimore. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but you did. <laughs> Next on a, a new uh, new rendition of The Wire, you'll be seeing iPhone 3 GSs being dropped into garbage cans all over Baltimore. <laughs> all right. You want to start with uh, our iOS 6 list, our, our rumor yes. list? All right, yes, go yes, ahead, because yes. I know you're like you're drooling. Um, I can control my drooling. What are you trying to say? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, lots of iOS uh, 6 rumors that are ready to come out next week. Mm -hmm. Some of these we've already kind of talked about. Some are kind of new. This one uh, is probably the first that I've seen. 9to5Mac reporting that full Siri Assistant will be issued or come available to iPads mm -hmm. in iOS 6. Um, we kind of thought this was going to happen. Actually, a lot of people thought this was going to happen when the new iPad came out. Um, and then it was just voice dictation on the keyboard. So to have full, full, full Siri finally come out mm -hmm. um, may not be to all three iPads. I'm thinking probably only two and three. I would bet only the three. Or only the three. Um, only because, as Apple does, like, wh like why can't Siri work on the four? And yeah, no. I was gonna say that's true. If they brought it to iPad two, then they would have to um, answer to why it's not on iPhone. 4. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Mm. Maybe they don't want to do that. Yeah, probably not. Uh, do not disturb notification settings. Uh, these are the same ones that are in uh, in Mountain Lion, right? Yeah, um, we saw them first in the Mountain Lion preview, and now people are saying that they're going to be brought. From Mountain Lion to iOS 6, which seems really kind of bizarre because a lot of these things that we're seeing in Mountain Lion have been brought from mm -hmm. iOS 6. Mm -hmm. So it's like this kind of got brought from iOS 6 to Mountain Lion and then brought back to iOS. But but know. what are we seeing now? Now we're a seeing lot a lot of these two yep. OSs are really, really converging. Yeah, I, uh, as I predicted a while back, and, and this is a pure prediction because even though I am a developer, I do not have any inside info on this, is that it does seem as if they're trying to merge the APIs together somehow. Yeah. And then, of course, you're going to have device-specific issues, camera on the device, not necessarily you know, a camera on the, on the Mac, but um, well, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I'm st we're starting to see this whole convergence of the two. And I will bet that the way I'm thinking is that, all right, Mountain Lion is going to be 10.8. Then we're going to have 10.9. Now, what, yeah. <laughs> this is the age old issue of, of what happens after 10.9. Do you go to 10.10? 10.10 10 or do is you it go 10 to 10.10 or is it 11.0? Because I, I used they to get into. They could do either. Well, I know. I'm just saying that I used to get into philosophical arguments about whether or not 10.10 10 is the same thing as 10.1 because in math. Oh, 10. yeah, point, I see what you're saying. You no. Know, is it a number wow, or that is, sounds yeah. like such a troll argument? It, well, that's because the internet is okay. full of them. Anyways, but <laughs> <laughs> um, they could go ten point ten. They could do whatever they want. They they, they could. Yeah. Um, but I think the main thing here is that a lot of people there. There's an almost equally philosophical debate going on whether. Mac OS is becoming more iOSified mm -hmm. or iOS is becoming more Mac OSified. And I don't think it's either. I think they're both converging on the same like horizontal, you know, point on the horizon. Oh, sure. 
Um, they're not, it's not like one is becoming the other or vice versa. They're both becoming this third thing that will be an amalgamation of everything. Right, right. All right, what else do we have coming, rumored? Uh, VIPs in email. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a heavy Gmail user, which I'm not, even though I use Gmail, I don't use Gmail in the browser or anything like that. Um, you might be familiar with this. It's a way to prioritize kind of like your favorite people or your favorite email addresses mm -hmm. by flagging them or starring them. And so they kind of take precedence in your inbox. Okay. Um, kind of a small deal, small update, but um, some people are, you know, of course, because it's similar to something else that's already out existing now, it is getting a little bit more fanfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, f this Facebook integration is getting really interesting. Uh, yeah, well, we kind of we kind of saw this coming from a mile away, and yeah. with the Twitter, I mean, people were saying in iOS five this was going to happen when it mm -hmm. didn't, and and there was just Twitter. Um, a lot of people obviously were saying, "Where's Facebook? What happened to that?" Yeah. Um, but now it looks like, and and this might just be Tim Cook being, you know able to orchestrate this and maybe i don't know resurrect any burn bridges prior hang on garage band farted well that's lovely i know isn't it do you want me to keep going no yeah um no just pause it you know it may just this it just stopped recording altogether Ooh. About thirty seconds ago, hold on. Let me see. What was the last thing that I that you said? Yes, everything out of my mouth is very important. Whoa! I sound like such a valley girl. No, it's you need to play it back like that. <sighs> if I have to reboot my machine, I will be is this very the angry. Pro? Yes, it's the Mac Pro. Oh, that's weird. It's getting... It's pissed. <laughs> it's it's having a little temper tantrum. It's like, oh, you're talking about me? Okay. Oh, oh you think I'm useless? I'll show you useless. <laughs> Motherfucker. You're going to replace me? Replace this. I see now it's working. I just had to quit. No, wait a minute. Please tell me that there's audio here. Okay. Sorry about that, people watching, um, all one of you. How many people are watching? Um, two. I'm watching. I'm right, watching. Well, then there's somebody else. I'm always watching. I think I'm uh, going to have to do what Scott said, which is just reboot before every show. But this didn't happen up until like maybe three oh, months ago. Oh, I thought ago. you did do that. No, well, I'm going to have to start doing it now because... Um, yeah. Uh, just this, this Mac Pro. Okay, I'm all starting... Right. Recording. All right. Now. All right. So we're talking about Facebook integration. Yes. Sorry. And I forget what I was saying. Um, Here, let me hold on. No, Just... no, no. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, with iOS 5 and, and there is full Twitter integration and everybody mm -hmm. was saying that that would be full Facebook integration. That didn't happen. So everybody got butt hurt. Um, and now... It, Everybody's saying with iOS 6, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's just a carried over kind of rumor from iOS 5. But I kind of feel like it might be, you know, if if the rumors were true back then that, say, something Steve Jobs and Zuckerberg had a huge falling out, that I really would believe that Tim Cook would have the capability to resurrect that burn sure. grid. Sure. And and then bring this to full fruition mm -hmm. like they had maybe been planning the first time around. Uh, this is what a brand new iPhone rumor you added this one about iOS airdrop coming. Yeah, I saw this. Um, I believe it was on iLounge. Um, they were posting some new rumors for the new iPhone and stating that because of it would have a um, uh, the new I want to say the new 802.11 AC Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and Bluetooth 4.0 
that either they had knowledge or they're depicting that it would also integrate some sort of iOS airdrop. Right. Um, this would be, I would think, uh, part of iOS 6, but also, you know, the first time we see airdrop on iOS, which also leads me to <laughs> question, who has used airdrop on Lions since it came out? I haven't used it once. Have you? No. Like I don't <laughs> know. Said, no. Any, <laughs> Let's move on. End of story. I don't know anyone. Like I know a lot of people with Lion. I don't know anyone who uses AirDrop or has even looked at it for more than two seconds. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to even bring up in the Finder. When you click on AirDrop, it takes a while for it. It takes longer for it to scan and find other Macs mm -hmm. than it than um, the airport does to scan available wireless networks. Yeah. Now for me, I have sharing on, so all the machines in in my house show up on um on my uh, devices bar on the left-hand right. side. Yeah. So I just everything is already shared, so drop and and done. Yeah, I think they were just trying to kind of simplify and maybe dumb down that and so you're not putting it you're not navigating to a public folder or whatever on each machine. You're just throwing it up and it's up to the other person to click yes, accept, mm -hmm. dirt, dirt, you know, and do their part. So there's less steps for each user in a sense because each user is kind of picking up this, you know, instead of one user doing more steps, two users do less steps. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's all we've got on iOS 6 at this point. And we'll know more, um, I guess, on Monday. I think so. I hope we'd know more. I mean, they would put it. <laughs> chances we are it's, it's WWDC and you're going to have thousands of people there. And, and chances are you're going to say yeah. to them, yep, you can download it now. Despite all of these rumors, and there's like a ton of rumors coming out hardware wise and, mm -hmm. and other software wise. I mean, traditionally, WWDC is mostly iOS based, yeah. and we really, really haven't heard a whole lot of iOS leaks. So either Tim Cook was right, they're doubling down on the secrecy, mm -hmm. or um, I don't know, maybe the iOS 6 isn't going to be a huge upgrade. Yeah, so we'll see. Thunderbolt, uh, you. this is uh, an article that you added. Uh, Thunderbolt is finally getting traction with Asus, MSI, Gigabit, and uh, they're making Thunderbolt boards. And I'm, I want to add that there's something I'm going to be talking about later on in the show and things I want. So mm -hmm. so, so, what, what is this about? Tell okay, about so um, again, I kind of mentioned this at the top of the show, um, Comdex, the convention show going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, what is it, in Asia, Korea? Yeah. I'm not sure where exactly it is. Um, it's not here. Um, but they have a lot of hardware announcements. Intel had a huge keynote. Um, but a lot of these part manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for people building their own machines, you know, not just selling to, you know, big box manufacturers like uh, HP or Dell, but mainly like Asus, uh, MSI, Gigabit, yep. Who make ports directly to the end user, or make parts directly to the end user for building their own box? So they're announcing their up and coming stuff. Mm -hmm. So big thing that you're hearing through a lot of these guys are Thunderbolt integration, mm -hmm. specifically in their new up and coming motherboards, um, accessories. So everybody. There was a lot of talk about how when are these Thunderbolt accessories coming? When, you know, is Thunderbolt going to be really accepted by the mainstream, by the PC manufacturers explicitly? Um, it looks like it's coming. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's here. It looks like Thunderbolt is going to be a legitimate port and a legitimate mode of data transfer. Mm -hmm. And it's not, well, maybe it was a... Not quite dead on arrival. Maybe it was asleep on arrival, but now it's coming and it's okay. Yeah. So we shall see. We shall see. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I I may even put a, a Thunderbolt card in my uh, in my PC, my Windows machine. Yeah. No. I'm totally. I I'm excited if just to give Thunderbolt legitimacy because I think it's a really great mm -hmm. um, spec. It's a really great. Yes. You know, there. I mean, 
just everything that it can, you know, has so many possibilities for manufacturers to not pick that up. I. Oh yeah. It's silly for them not to pick it up. I mean, think about what things were before uh USB became popular back in like 97 ish. Yeah. Right? No, I told, I think, I mean, it's the new USB and then some it's, it's a much higher rate of data transfer, but it also will carry video and audio. Oh, it yeah. also carry no, what, you can do, uh, I have a Mobi um, HDMI to Thunderbolt adapter that will mm -hmm. carry audio and video. Sure. And then you can even hook up video cards to it. But we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about my, my thing I want right. a little later. Uh, IDC, this, this, I, I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about this. IDC is projecting <laughs> that Windows Phone is, supposed to sur is going to surpass... <clears throat> um, iPhone by 2016. And, yeah. And I just go, I don't think so. But, right, but, so but if, if you look at it, it's the percentage market share that they're talking about is 0.2%. Mm -hmm. So there's, whoa, yeah. Whoa, so so whoa. this is sort of a link bait sort of article. And I'm really not thrilled about when, when things like this are written, but I'm, I'm yeah. reading it only because. I'm not quite sure that we're going to see Windows, Windows Phone have, they're saying a 19.2% market share, iOS a 19% market share, Android 52.9%. And there's a helicopter behind me if you can hear it. So, the cops are coming for you. <laughs> they hear what you're saying about Windows Phone. Microsoft <laughs> has issued a warrant for your arrest. I have my window open because it'll be hot as hell in here. No, and now it's going to get loud. Um, but um, No, I mean, okay, let's just... How many carriers, and, and I don't even know, but how many carriers is Windows Phone on? It's on AT&T. Is that it? I think that's it. I think it's only on AT&T right now, I want to say it's it? like on Sprint and at least one other one. Uh, I, I know the Nokia oh, Maybe it's the Nokia is just on AT&T. It's just the Nokia, I think. Okay. Um, in any case, I don't, even if they're on the big three, I don't think they're on more than that. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't think that they have any prepaid stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple has finally crossed that barrier where the iPhone is, is everywhere. It's not just on the big three. You know, a few weeks ago, we reported that they're going to all these little niche carriers in like Appalachia and Alaska, um, China, you know, is getting on board and and all throughout the EU and now Cricket Wireless and prepaid carriers are getting on board with the iPhone. Yep. It's unstoppable. The Windows phone has so much more ground to cover. And by 2016, even though that's kind of far off, I don't see that happening. Yeah. I, here's the thing about predictions like this. And the reason why I, I wanted to talk about this is for one specific reason is that these people have absolutely no clue what Apple is going to announce tomorrow, Nobody next week, does. next Nobody year, does. two years from now. They can yeah. come up with something which is going to completely blow everything away. And so these predictions, as I do in air quotes on video, is to me just a complete waste of time. But I'm talking mm -hmm. about it because I want to bring to light the fact that um, years ago people said, uh, that Apple was going to die, or the uh, the iPod well, will never get anywhere. And while well, they were, but but that's what I'm saying is that any company can pull themselves out if they innovate enough. Yes, yes. And yeah. as as Apple did, and so predictions like this are they're, they're nothing but useless. All the only people that use these sorts of things are the fanboys that go, man, well, IDC said that it's going to 2016, and, and it's only 0.2 percent. It's yeah. link bait. Don't fall into traps like that. Hate link bait articles, driving me like nuts. Like we're linking to. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to link to that. Okay. <laughs> um. Hey, so I hear uh, some new banners have gone up at Moscone Center. Yep. Nice, colorful uh, ones. Yeah. So I mean, oh, big surprise! In case you're late to this party and don't know, WWDC is <laughs> next week. The banners have started to go up on Moscone. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty. Go figure. They're their pretty. Slogan. What's so, their slogan? Uh, uh, where great ideas go on to do great things. Oh. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh. Uh, there's also. Uh, 
there's been a use of the uh, the new Apple. Well, I don't want to say the new Apple logo, but a, a different Apple logo, uh, which is made by uh, squares uh, with rounded corners tilted at forty five degrees of what? different of various sizes. So um, I don't know. How did I miss this? You didn't see that? No, I I saw the banners, but I didn't. Yeah, sc- I guess I didn't see like the blown up version. Scroll down. That's some sort of new. Oh no. They're not going to make... That's just like... That's probably just a thing for this WWDC. Oh, yeah. That's not going to be a new Apple logo for yeah, sure. That's why I said it's it's not the Apple logo. It's just something No, no, using. no. It's just something they made for the convention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got me <laughs> off. I was like, what? 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm skipping the next one. Uh... Oh, you don't want to talk about no, it? No, because I didn't read it enough. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it hey, next week. so uh, you know how all those people were ragging on Apple when they came out with natural scrolling and Lion? Yeah. Guess who's adding that to Windows 8 now? Gosh, gee, Willikers, Kesey, tell us. That's crazy that Microsoft would get on the bandwagon with natural scrolling oh. after everyone was really just harping and putting it down and oh first thing you gotta do after you install lion reverse the scrolling do a natural scroll that's what i did i don't don't like the natural scrolling but now it's you know why part of the reason why is because of windows because i use both machines i you know i have a a gaming machine the same i actually when i first got lion i put in three months and i trained myself you know and i got used to it Mm -hmm. to do natural scrolling and then I started doing uh, much heavier IT where I was working much, much more with end user mm-hmm. desktops. And it just screwed me up going back and forth. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> um, I like seriously, you, you come in as an authority like, yes, let me fix your computer. I know all things and I can't even work <laughs> the scroll wheel. There's a serious disconnect there. Yeah, there so is. So I had to turn it back to unnatural scrolling <laughs> and um you know go back to to the old way um i but i i mean i was serious about like i'm gonna adopt this you know and this is it's gonna make sense and then it did and then i had to go back but um but i think this kind of ties into the whole reason apple did it was because of tablets mm-hmm. was because of ios sure. Because that's how you scroll on the iPad. Mm -hmm. And so they want to make the iPad experience almost as close enough as they can to the the trackpad Mm -hmm. experience on either the MacBooks or the Magic trackpad on the desktop. They want to make that exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And that's legitimate. And so Windows 8, of course, is copying in their footsteps um, because Windows 8 is really a tablet OS. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really forces you to be in the Metro interface, even though it has the desktop interface. It kicks you out into Metro as much as it possibly can. Yeah. Um, and so they've uh, they've done the same thing and adopted the natural scrolling, which is natural for tablets. Mm-hmm. Not so much, I think, for desktops or laptops. No, no. And they call it natural scrolling. And like you said before, was it unnatural before? I mean, that's what well, we're yeah, all used yeah. to. It was always a question of, are you scrolling the bar? Are you scrolling the content? And mm-hmm. they're always different. So, okay. Google announced that um, they're going to have new 3D features for Google Earth. And it's coming to Android and iOS. This is coming on the heels of Apple saying, nope, we're ditching Google Maps and we're going to roll our own. They yeah. bought some companies uh, to deal with that. And so now you're going to have Google Maps on the iPhone anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but Apple said that Google Maps was limited, and so they wanted to do more with it and couldn't. Now Google is doing <laughs> 3D with Google Earth, and and we'll see what they do. It'll be I interesting. I think it was, I think it was only limited in what Google was willing to let Apple do. Well, that's my point. Is that now now that they're sort of divorced as far as the whole maps thing go. Now Google can say, okay, well, fine. Now we're going to do our own thing. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> So uh, I saw the videos. The videos are are actually quite interesting, and um, it, yeah, no, it looks nice. But I mean, all Google videos look nice. All their promo stuff. I mean, that's the whole intent. True, 
but they're not <laughs> they're not using any potato cannons to uh to show off Google Earth 3D. Man, if they were though. <laughs> All right, let's move on to things I want. Uh, going back to what we were talking about with Thunderbolt, uh, what is that? What are you doing? What is this? I was um, the things I want dance. <laughs> the thing I want dance. Belkin is creating this device. I love this thing. It's called the Thunderbolt Express Dock, and it has USB E SATA. Um, uh, what is it? Firewire eight hundred. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, let me, let me just bring this up because I'm trying to do this off of memory. Yeah, three um, USB 2.0 audio in and out, um, eighth inch jacks, <laughs> a Thunderbolt pass through, which is nice. FireWire 800, yeah. eSATA, and an Ethernet jack for 300 bucks. I'm looking at this. I'm going. No, just, no, 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 no. What? Oh, uh, oh they bump it. Oh, that's right. It's not 300 bucks. It's 400. Oh. It's just 400 bucks for this amazing <laughs> dock. Which is different than the one There's that... There's another one, a competing one that mm -hmm. we saw on 9to5Mac. Yeah. Made by some company called Matrox. Yeah. M-A-T-R-O-X. -T yeah, I've heard of it. It looks exactly the same. So you connect it via Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. and then it gives you um, DVI, which yes. this Vulcan one should totally have done. Yes. Um, Ethernet... Three, two or three USBs, it's, audio in and out, and it, I think that's it. It's one USB 3.0, and I think the other one or two are USB 2.0. 2.0, But the yeah. difference, the, the one of the big differences between the Belkin and the Matrox one is that the Matrox one doesn't have a Thunderbolt pass-through. No, you're right, so, and it doesn't have eSATA or FireWire. Right, so... Um, the Matrox one is almost half the price at 250 though. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about this because I would want to buy the Belkin one for expandability, mm -hmm. at maybe at some point. But at the same time, when you're when you're spending four hundred bucks on something, you would sort of expect it to have at least maybe a mini DVI. Yeah, even a mini DVI, yeah. a DVI of like or another um, some other video port of some sort. HDMI. Because even. Even HDMI. Sure. Um, a lot of people, most people, I think, still use DVI, especially in the workplace. And who is going to be your number one client with any sort of docking station? <laughs> it's going to be the enterprise people, the business people. Yeah. They're all about the docks. And if you don't have DVI or even, I mean, dare I say it, VGA, mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's essentially a lost cause sure so I, I i don't really need one of these things i know it's under things i want these this is more of things i may want in the future someday if i need to expand <laughs> yes indeed. um but it would be a tough choice between the the matrox one that doesn't have a pass-through but does have dvi and right. the belkin which is more expensive gives you more stuff has Maybe the in a second uh, iteration of one of these, you know, they can kind of meld together or like the, um, what is it, like a transformer, you know, come together <laughs> and make a bigger, better dock. Yeah, I would, I would like that. Um, this may actually be good. I, I don't know how well Thunderbolt works for doing podcasting and such. I would really love to test it, mm -hmm. um, but it may be good for expanding devices and such. So, yeah. So what's your thing that you want? Um, so the thing I want is this, uh, little known, uh, little upstart, uh, device. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people are kind of concentrating on the seven inch iPad, but there's a thing already out that's kind of like a seven inch iPad. Um, it's called the Apple Newton, <laughs> uh, Harry McCracken of Technologizer did a piece, I believe on the Times website, uh, review of this Apple Newton, and uh, you know, overall it was pretty nice. Um, the graphics aren't so hot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a Retina display, and hell, it doesn't even have you know as many colors. But it's got you know handwriting to text recognition. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have so many languages, but it's got a fax modem, mm -hmm. um, dial-up modem, um, lots of proprietary adapters because we all love those um 
I think I think it's got some. Uh, I think it's got a bright future ahead of it. Gee, Casey, where can you buy one of those? Um, you know, I'm seeing most of these on eBay, some <laughs> eBay.com site. I don't know. I, I can't find them on Apple site. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> um, it seems like you can only get them on eBay. Maybe Craigslist. Oh, you think so? No, <laughs> I, those are probably just scams. But the, but this this Apple Newton does does it even do handwriting recognition? Yeah, no, it comes get with this, out. Does it? It comes with this stylus thing. It's weird. Oh, that's so. The... Look out, Galaxy Note. Here comes the Newton. <laughs> All right, let's move on to apps. All right, my app for today, which I, I'm thinking of right this instant, uh, because I didn't write one down. <laughs> Because I'm so prepared for this uh, episode today. Wow. Um, Turntable, which is an app. I don't use it as much as I used to, but it's an app that allows you to share music in a room. You can be a DJ. And what? This isn't connected to like turntable.fm at all. That's what it is. It is. Yes. Turntable.fm for the iPhone. And it it works pretty well. I haven't updated it in a while, but I remember when I was using it just a few months ago, it was actually a lot of fun. And the last time I used Turntable, it was only in the browser. They didn't have an app yet. Yeah, so they have an app. And uh, you can create rooms, you can join rooms, and you can do a lot of the things that you could do before. There's some things that you're limited to um, that mm-hmm. you can only do on the browser, but you can do all the basic functionality like DJing and pulling from a list and things like that. So yeah, turntable, it's called turntable, but it's, it's the same app for uh, turntable.fm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I have, um, a similar, I guess it's a similar app. It streams, um, media. Uh, it's the HBO go app. <laughs> um, I, I, I've, you know, had HBO for a while. Uh, well, okay, I don't. The in-laws have it, and then I stream <laughs> it from their account. Um, but I haven't used the HBO Go app on the iPad or iPhone. Mm-hmm. I've only, you know, used HBO Go on uh, on my MacBook. So I finally got around to using it on the iPad. It's really freaking nice. Is it really? It's a really nice, really pretty, well-designed, functional app. All right, I'm, um, I'm grabbing it now. They did a really good job. And I checked it out on the iPhone, too, um, mainly because when I downloaded it for my iPad, it showed up on my iPhone. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, same kind of deal. It's it's actually it's just really well-designed. It's really pretty. Everything's easy to find and easy to get to, and the navigation is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those apps where you're just like, oh, thank God, you know, they did this right. <laughs> really? Okay, because I like yeah. when apps are done right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a no, stickler totally. about that. No, you don't that. have to, like, search around and, and click a bunch of buttons and links to drill down to what you want. Like, it's it's just everything's really it doesn't matter what you're looking for it's easy to get to and you know if you download the app you'll know what i mean even if you don't have an hbo account you can actually download the app and just browse hbo go Mm. you won't get a whole lot out of it but you can (laughs) you know kind of see what i'm talking about as far as the app goes so if you're a developer it's definitely one to look at oh okay so I'm, i'm looking at it now it's asking me who is your provider and oh, so here it is. There should oh. be an option to just like browse, and then you can just kind of. Well, there is, but okay. I'm I'm, I'm trying and it out because uh, I'm putting in my. Uh, I forgot my password. Okay, I don't. Uh, hold on. Let me. Okay, so keep me signed in. Sign <laughs> in. <laughs> and it should. <laughs> no. Please note unknown system error. Oh, that's great. Oh, I I haven't gotten that. Awesome. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll figure it out later. I was hoping it would work because then I could just like stream something immediately. That way I can catch up on Game of Thrones downstairs when people are watching stuff upstairs. You can. It would be perfect. Um, iPad, though, definitely for iPad. that. iPad, okay. All right. I think we're done. Are we done? And we're at the end of our dock, so oh, that must be... <laughs> end of our dock, so we are done. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing on Monday? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's this little teeny tiny thing that Apple is doing 
that we haven't been talking about for like weeks and weeks on end. The keynote is finally Monday, people. <laughs> so we will be doing a special report Monday night. Okay, all about so WWDC. Yeah, it, I want to do that, and we're going to talk about all of the things. Buy, all the things. All the things. Buy all the things. Uh, so we're going to do that after, I guess, you get back from work. What's yeah. Coast time? So <laughs> I have to go to work first. Yeah, but, I know. Um, and you can't do it from so work, probably, unfortunately. So probably, you know, in the evening on Monday, um, mm -hmm. after we've all had a chance to fully absorb all the blogs and mm -hmm. video and live blogging and pundits and I'm sure Google Hangouts and <laughs> maybe even chat roulettes on the subject. No. Um, no. Hey, you know. No. No chat roulette. <laughs> no. All right. Hey, speaking of chat roulette. <sighs> what? Okay. I no, no. What? What? Did you hear about this new uh, AirPlay or AirTime? AirTime. Like, yeah. Airtime. I'm a little like creeped out by it. Yeah, I think it's the new new chat roulette. It's got some promise. <laughs> the kids got a future. It um I, I launched it and then it said um it connects through Facebook and it pulls in your interests somehow, I guess, from Facebook. And so mm -hmm. it's got all my bizarre interests and it says oh, find somebody perfect. to chat with. And I went perfect. Who am, who no. I don't want to chat with anybody because I no. Mm -mm. That's perfect. How how is it gonna not be like chat roulette if your interests aren't bizarre? Because then you can find somebody that has your interests that also likes to yeah. Show so their like stuff. if your interests include penis and then this <laughs> other dude's interest includes penis. No. Perfect. And Star Trek. <laughs> chat roulette two no. go. No, all right. Let, let, I think it's time to go. <laughs> okay uh you can find us all over the interwebs we're on facebook at the infinite loop show we're on google plus the infinite loop show we're on youtube the infinite loop show all together we're on the twitters the inf or infinite loop TV. tv yes um you can email us at the infinite loop show at gmail.com please do correct us on all our shortcomings and we will <laughs> correct you right back in the show uh, we're on iTunes. Uh, give us a review and we'll mention you in the show. And um, what else? I don't know. If you're watching live, obviously you found us on Ustream, uh, channel Infinite Loop TV. Mm -hmm. With dashes in there somewhere. I think uh, it's infinite. Sprink yeah, sprinkle some dashes in there somewhere. <laughs> you know. All right. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you later.